Thank you very much. Um, David has outlined a number of questions, and I'm really only going to try to uh, address one. Am I coming through okay without You are. Much? You are. You're fine. Yeah, very good. Okay. Very clear. So what I want to address is what would be the essential characteristics of a life-serving new economics paradigm. Uh, and I will deal with goals, methodology, building on experiential as well as scientific knowledge, context, and interdisciplinarity. Starting with goals in two parts, and the first is that a new economics should help to define the goals of the economy. Uh, a basic framework is the idea that any economy should operate so as to promote well-being in the present and the future. Now, in David Corton's formulation of the question, he includes that it needs to be grounded in moral principles. And I'm not sure that it has to do that. Um, it certainly must not deny moral principles nor deny the fact that economists, like other people, have moral principles, and I think economists need to be honest about the values that they personally bring. Um, this is in stark contrast to what I call 20th century economics, which, while pretending to be value-free, has con contributed to destructive cultural norms about what is right and wrong for individuals and businesses and the valuing of selfish individualism, marketization, and growth has contributed to a devaluing of sharing, caring, cooperation, and the kinds of coordination that require some kind of government. But rather than taking these head on as a writer of economics textbooks, my proposal is that to state the goal as well-being in the present and the future that can't be achieved anyway without a just society and a healthy ecological surround. So that that follows naturally, inevitably, from that goal. And I don't feel, I, I, I might find in the end that I'm wrong about this, and I bet you Peter won't like it, but I don't feel that it's necessary, for example, to get into the question of intrinsic values. Uh, I would rather lay out the well-being goal there, including the future, and let people derive from it what makes sense to them, uh, in part according to their own moral code. The second part of the goal of economics must be to help people to understand how to move the economy towards its goals. Going on to methodology, uh, Methodology has been a really critical aspect of 20th, 20th century economics. It has presented a concept of what the method, the scientific method has to be, which has really stymied a lot of other efforts. Um, Bob Solo said to me when I was just starting to study economics that the great boast of this discipline is that it is fully axiomatized that you start from the rationality postulate that rational economic man uh, optimizes or his uh, self-interest, and that everything else in the discipline can be deduced from that. Um, so it's a purely deductive science as boasted by one of the foremost practitioners. And I don't think that's necessary. I think it needs to be... Um, a combination of deduction and induction, probably more on induction. Uh, it needs to use theory as generalizations from observed facts. It needs to shuttle back and forth between observation and theory and frequently test generalizations against new observations. The third aspect to what I think is needed in a new economics is a a basic understanding of what do we know and how do we know it because again we have to defend ourselves from this axiomatized alternative which says all you need to know is the rationality postulate and that seems to me uh, to lead in some bad directions um, 20th century economics has contributed to a shared understanding of how things work 
which is in fact laden with values and contrary to experience, and yet uh, to come up with an alternative, we have to have an alternative methodology. So the starting point that I have been developing in the textbooks on contextual economics is a more modest proposal to respect each individual as a source of knowledge about human beings, uh, who are, after all, the major, though not the only, creators of and players in the economy. Assume that the individual economy, uh, economist knows more about human motivations than can be summarized in any set of statements. And um, if it seems desirable later, or if I have the time, I will read a short statement about our starting point of where we start with a few simple things that we know about human motivations and behavior. Next, context. Obviously, a useful understanding of the economy has to take into account the most critical interactions between the economy and its ecological and social contexts, showing how the economy is in various ways enable, enabled and constrained by these contexts, and how the environmental and social influences on the uh, social contexts influence the economy and are in turn affected by it. Fifth, interdisciplinarity. While as asking the economist to use his own experience and judgment, also expect her to draw on a wide variety of fields of knowledge. No individual can be expert in all the relevant fields, which include ecology, systems theory, sociology, psychology, nutrition, anthropology, philosophy, political theory, and so on. But economists need to have studied enough outside of economics so as to be able to talk comfortably with people from other disciplines and to know where to look for insights that they lack themselves, which means that economists have to talk in terms that non-economists can understand, no jargon. So those are some of the essential characteristics. Um, the barriers to being able to move to a more useful economics begin with, I think, the institutions, the universities, in which people are trained to be economists. And then we have the human capital, which has been developed in these institutions, of people who have uh, decided not to drop out of economics, um, not being sufficiently uh, annoyed or offended by what it teaches them, <laughs> and willing to accept what it teaches. and. Finally, what I call Obama's dilemma. If you yourself are not deeply immersed in economics, how do you choose which economists to listen to? And if you're Obama, how do you choose which economists should be playing major policy roles? Uh, does it depend on rep reputation in the discipline or effectiveness in the economy, which means good at making money? Uh, for example, on Wall Street, it seems as if that last is the criterion that Obama has used with not very good results. <laughs> so uh, in order to overcome these barriers, a first requirement is to have an alternative way of conferring respectability uh, to overcome Obama's dilemma. And of course, many changes are needed in the culture of educational institutions. And to come to where I'm spending my life, none of these changes are going to succeed without better teaching materials. Now, those are my, that's sort of my summary. Um, okay. And perhaps I should stop there, although no. I could. Uh, 